Hello, everyone. I hope you had a fantastic summer. Welcome to the start of the 2021-2022 school year. If we haven't had the pleasure of meeting, my name is Kyla Hozier. I'm the principal of the school, entering my fourth year here. Uh, I have the pleasure of working predominantly with students in grades 9 and 10. And if you ever need me, you can find my office in the admin building uh, above the stairs right before you go down to the cafeteria. We're excited to kick off the new school year. And with that, I'll introduce my colleague, Ms. Joseph. Thank you, Mr. Hozier. Welcome, everybody. My name is Mary Rose Joseph. I'm the assistant principal, one of the assistant principals at the Edgemont Junior Senior High School. I primarily work with grades 11 and 12. Um, and my office is located in the counseling suite. And this is my second year here at Edgemont. I'm so excited to be here with all of you. And I will introduce Ms. Johnson. Hi, everybody. Good evening. I'm Jennifer Johnson. I'm the other assistant principal, and I work primarily with grades seven and eight. And this is my ninth year at Edgemont, and my office is in the main office. If you ever would like to come by and say hi, or if you need anything, please don't hesitate. And we're pleased to have our superintendent of schools here with us tonight, Dr. Victoria Newell. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for being here this evening, and thanks for your continued partnership as we work together to provide an excellent ed education for all of your students and all of our students. Thank you, Dr. Newell. As we approach the upcoming school year, uh, there are, of course, probably questions that you have. We have some information we'd like to share with you and then leave a lot of time for us to answer any questions you have. We have just under an hour together. So some of the things we want to highlight, we want to point out uh, some of the characteristics of our nine period day schedule, share health and safety updates with you, identify our lunch plan, share the new quarantine procedures that are in place, make sure that we all have some of the same shared expectations for the upcoming school year, identify important people for you to know, highlight the importance of student activities, and then allow you to ask any questions that you may have using the Google form that was shared uh, in an email earlier today. So with that, if, uh, if I may, I'd like to uh, remind everyone of our nine period day schedule. This was the schedule that we used prior to the pandemic. Last year, we had a six period uh, schedule that we thought worked well, but we are reverting back to this nine period day schedule, um, largely because of the amount of instructional time that we gain through this schedule. We, we know that that's important. The school day starts at 8.30 and ends at 3.02 p.m. The uh, class periods are each 40 minutes in length with a four minute passing period. And you should know that unlike last year, if students wanna arrive early, they can. We have the library that will be open for students. The library typically opens around 7.30 a.m. and closes each day around 4 p.m. Should also note uh, that if you haven't been stuck in traffic yet, uh, with everyone coming back, we do expect traffic to be more of an issue, both at um, drop off and pick up. So if you arrive for drop off anytime after 810, you do run the risk of getting stuck in traffic. Um, so if that's something you wanna avoid, please know that you can drop your children off prior to 810 and you can avoid most of the traffic. Likewise, at the end of the day, if you get here right at 302, we typically have traffic until about 315 or, or 320. So if you wanna avoid that, that's an option you have. You can um, pick up your children at 320 and, and avoid most of the traffic. In terms of health and safety, we know that there are a lot of concerns entering the new year. I first want to reassure you that uh, we learned a ton through last year. Um, we had great procedures in place to keep people safe. We um, have a lot of experience with this and we feel good about what we learned and we'll utilize that for the upcoming school year. So there, there are some um, approaches here that we're going to continue with because they worked last year. How do we know they worked? because every time we had a positive case on campus where we then had to quarantine other students or adults, none of those other people who had to quarantine ever contracted COVID. And that speaks to the health and safety precautions that we have in place. So we know how to do this and we'll, we'll be prepared when school starts on September 9th. Like last year, masks will be required indoors. Students um, do not need to wear a mask while they're outside. Well, of course they can if they feel more comfortable wearing masks um, outdoors. In classrooms, we aim to have three feet of distance between students when space allows for that. We have some classrooms where the classrooms are a little bit smaller, so it might be a little less, 
um, but we are aiming to have three feet of distance between students in all classes. And then for lunch, which I'll speak a little more about lunch in a moment, we wanna make sure that we have six feet of separation uh, for students. And to do that, we're gonna use additional spaces for lunch beyond just the cafeteria. Like last year, we will um, clean indoor spaces and disinfect indoor spaces each day. We are trying to finalize details related to a gateway COVID testing program that we would utilize that could test all students and faculty who volunteer prior to the start of the school year. And like last year, we will continue with our random testing throughout the fall. Um, and we know that that uh, helped and so we wanna make sure that's still in place this year. And then finally, if you've been on campus, you know that we have a beautiful campus with terrific outdoor spaces. We will continue to use those outdoor spaces for classes and for lunch uh, when weather permits. And um, again, all of these things we learned, we utilized last year, and we are confident going into the new school year that like last year, we were able to limit transmission. We expect the same to be true for the upcoming school year. Lunch will look quite a bit different than it did last year. We will have breakfast available for students uh, from 8 to 9 a.m. in the cafeteria. A uh, more robust lunch uh, menu will be offered to students. We're probably going to have a, maybe a fewer, uh, a couple fewer options listed uh, for students on the menu than, say, pre-pandemic years. But we will have hot food, cold food. It will be more like the menu that was offered to students prior to the um, start of the pandemic. We're going to start the year and narrow this down a little bit only because we want to make sure that the lines aren't too long, that students can quickly get their food and then go to um, an area to have lunch. And once we know that those lines don't take too long, we will continue to offer more options for students. The menu, just so you know what the menu looks like, it will be available on our, on our school website. Last year, students uh, had to purchase their lunch in advance. That's no longer the case. Um, students, the day of, they can uh, wait in line, take the meal that they would like, and then pay using cash. Or their student ID is connected to a, an account called the Pay For it account. And we will share information with you so you know how to load money into your child's account. Uh, that communication will be coming out later in the week. Lunch can be um, brought to school or it can be bought but we're not gonna allow deliveries this year. We wanna limit the number of people who are on campus. And if we allow deliveries, we're gonna have more people coming every single day. Um, and so we're gonna avoid that just to um, make sure that we know who's on campus. We have the cafeteria for students to eat. And we also have the back part of the cafeteria that will be available this year. We will utilize the San Marco gym again this year where we can have about 130 or 140 desks that are six feet apart. And then finally, the outdoor spaces, again, we wanna utilize the, that space even more than last year. So we bought additional benches, picnic tables. We have white uh, uh, folding chairs that will be outside that can be placed on X's on the ground that are six feet apart. So we're hoping for nice weather and we'll continue to use that outdoor space as long as we can. The quarantine procedures have changed uh, for this year. So as of right now, and I'll talk about these in sort of two buckets, vaccinated versus unvaccinated. If an individual is vaccinated and is exposed to a person who tests positive, that vaccinated individual does not need to quarantine if the person does not have any symptoms. So again, if there's someone who tests positive, if a person is vaccinated and they're near that person who tests positive, the vaccinated person does not need to quarantine provided they have no symptoms. You do need, or the guidance says that the person who is vaccinated who has been exposed should take a COVID test three to five days from the date of exposure, but that person can continue to come to school um, over that period um, until they're tested. So that's for vaccinated individuals. For unvaccinated individuals, it's a little bit different. If you are unvaccinated and you're within three feet of someone who tests positive for 15 minutes or longer over a 24 hour period, you will need to quarantine regardless of whether you have a mask or no mask on. If you are within six feet of an individual who tests positive with no mask on for 15 minutes or longer over a 24 hour period, you will also need to quarantine. So um, when might we have a situation where someone has to quarantine because they had a mask off uh, and they were closer than six feet. 
we have procedures in place to ensure that students are greater than six feet at lunch. But if we had a student who sat too close to a friend who tested positive at lunch while they ate lunch and they had their mask off, that person would have to quarantine if they were unvaccinated and within six feet. Our classrooms, again, we're gonna do everything we can to try to maintain a minimum of three feet where space allows us to have that three feet. Some of the classrooms are a little bit smaller. And so students may be closer to three feet. And if we have someone who tests positive, we often will look at the um, students who they sat next to. And if those students are unvaccinated and we're within three feet for 15 minutes or longer, that's when we might have students who have to quarantine. So we know that this is a huge disruption. The, um, the, those are calls I never like to make. And so I'm hoping that we don't have many cases where we have to quarantine students, but we will have to do that this year if we have any positive cases um, that meet the criteria for quarantine. So um, again, we hope that doesn't happen. And that's why when we ask students to socially distance or to wear a mask, that's why this is so important. With that, I'll turn it over to Ms. Joseph. Thank you, Mr. Hosier. So some of the work that we did all of last year, this past summer is really creating a sense of community where everyone feels safe and supported. And with that comes some shared expectations. One of the ways we, I, we make sure we uh, cultivate a sense of community is through communication. You'll be getting many communications from us throughout the course of the year, weekly updates from Mr. Hosier, et cetera. It's so important for us to follow the appropriate pathway for communication between schools and families. If there's an area of academic concern for your child, we encourage you to tell your child to reach out, for them to reach out to their teacher first. Typically it's resolved in that manner. And if it's not, it's always important to maybe involve the counselor. And then only if the, the issue is not addressed or resolved in that manner, then do you um, involve administration. But it's so important for us to build trusting relationships and create self-advocates in our kids. We are still in the pandemic and we're trying to make sure that everybody is safe. So if you know your child will be absent for the full day or, or part of the day, please notify the attendance office. It allows us to know who's on campus. And if they're not, it helps with quarantining and uh, contact tracing as well. More important than ever, if your child is sick, they must stay home. A cough, a sniffle, there is no reason for them to come home. They should rest. And when they come back fully recovered, we're happy to engage them in instruction. Students are expected to be on campus for the entire day from 8.30 a.m. to 3.02 p.m. Um, so juniors may leave campus for lunch, but it is a 40 minute period. It's important they're back to class on time. Attendance is a priority for classes. We just met with um, your children uh, today and we talked about what it means to be an Edgemont student and how, can, how we can be proud of being an Edgemont student. We talked about what does that look like? We talked about the code of conduct in terms of academic integrity. You know, it's a, Edgemont is a, is a high performing school and there are, there's a lot of uh, pressure to do well. So we, we talked about why it's important to be honest and uh, when you feel the pressure, how to reach out for support systems that we have on campus where you can avail yourself of those resources and always maintain a high level of integrity. Mr. Hosier talked about how beautiful the campus is. We talked about why it's important to use respectful behavior and language. So you're affirming each of your peers and adults on campus so everyone feels affirmed and valued and honored in your language and behavior. So that's something that we discussed with your kids just this afternoon. There are some people to know that I think you may have met already, but if you don't, these are some really uh, important people to know. Mr. Woodkey is a grade nine team leader. He teaches global, so your child may have him this year or may have had him before. If you need to uh, schedule a meeting with uh, grade nine teachers, Mr. Woodkey would be the one that you would contact to arrange for a meeting. We have three psychologists on campus, Dr. Greenwald, Ms. Younger, Dr. Shapiro, who are so generous of their time and their, uh, their skill sets. They're great to just throw some ideas off on how to navigate a difficult conversation with a, a friend or a teacher or another adult in the building. Great support services. And they're also found in the counseling office and also um, on campus as well. Ms. Matano and Ms. Moore are the junior high counselors. I'm sure you've met them before. And Ms. Brookman, Mr. Fleck, and Ms. Fuentes are the senior high counselors, where I'm sure you've met them when it came to course requests last year. And with that, I will turn it over to Ms. Johnson to talk about student activities on campus. Thank you, Ms. Joseph. So you may know that we have a whole slew of clubs and extracurricular activities that are available to students. And like last year, the clubs will meet 
Some will meet virtually and some will meet in person on campus, depending on the teacher and the students and what makes sense for each club. We encourage you to encourage your children to get involved. We're so thankful to our PTSA for sponsoring the yearly activities fair. We will be sure to let you know when once the day is set, it will probably be early October. So please encourage your child to get involved and to participate in clubs and extracurriculars. And now I'll turn it back to Mr. Hozier. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. I also want to highlight the appreciation that we have for our PTSA. They do so much uh, for our school, for our students. Um, their support makes a world of difference. So uh, we encourage you to support them uh, when given the opportunity and just wanna acknowledge all they do for our students. Earlier today, I sent out a reminder email for today's meeting. Uh, in that email, you should find a link to a Google form where you can ask questions. We already have some questions that have been submitted. If you have questions, um, please submit those questions. If questions are repeated, uh, we will likely only ask, um, or read the question once and then answer it. And we may paraphrase some of the questions that come through. With that, I'll stop sharing my screen. And Ms. Johnson, whenever you're ready for the first question. Okay. Can my ninth grader use her personal computer at school or does she need to use the school provided Chromebook? Students in grades five through nine need to use the school issued device. Uh, the reason why we do that is because teachers have greater access to see what students are working on when they use a school issued device. Plus personal devices are very expensive and our tech team can help support the, the devices that are issued by the school but not the um, personal devices. So grades 10 through 12 can bring their own devices, but grades five through nine need to use the school issue device. Are there daily or weekly sanitary, sanit sanit I can't even say the word, please excuse me, cleaning procedures to prevent COVID spreading? Yes, at the end of each day, uh, we, are, we have a great custodial staff. They will clean and disinfect each of the spaces uh, at the end of each school day. Oh, sorry, Ms. Johnson, you're muted. Will ninth and 10th graders have assigned study halls during free periods? So typically ninth and 10th graders do not have assigned study halls. They have frees. When students have a free, they can uh, use the outdoor space. They can go to the library. If uh, it's a time when students aren't in the San Marco gym for lunch, they could go there as well. Um, I should note that in the uh, library, the desks are already set up so that they're physically distanced. Um, students do have a little more freedom there. With that said, we are looking at how we may adjust some of our uh, course classes and band classes, which, which are very large. If we break those classes and divide those up a little bit, a ninth or 10th grader may end up in a study hall. If we take that approach, we'll communicate that in the very near future. Now there are a couple questions about students who may have been remote only last year or hybrid, and maybe they're not quite comfortable yet returning to school full time. Do we have any kind of gradual plan to ease them back in or any remote option for those students as well as others? So we did use a gradual approach last year. If you remember, uh, we were one of the few schools, I think, that continue to offer a full day option, a hybrid option and a remote option throughout the remainder of last year. For students who did remain remote, we had about 8% of students. We offered the opportunity for students to come in and meet with counselors and psychologists over the summer. A number of students took us up on that offer just so they could uh, see their counselors and psychologists and be on campus. We thought that that worked really well. If we have any students who still feel uncomfortable, we encourage them to reach out to us or for parents to reach out to us, but we will not have a remote option for students next year. This parent asks about the plan. They understand that children will be three feet apart in classrooms, but what about in the hallways when they're walking close together? So a lot of the guidance that I just referenced talks about sustained exposure of 15 minutes or more. Uh, and so that uh, passing between classes isn't the same as being um, uh, stationed at a desk or a chair next to someone for a prolonged period. The other thing that I would note that makes it so we're fortunate is that so much time spent between periods is, is spent outdoors. 
So that helps us. And then like last year, we will continue um, to monitor hallways to make sure that students aren't grouped together, blocking doors so the traffic flows uh, quickly. With four minutes, you don't have a lot of time to stand and talk to friends and, and stay in the hallway in that way. What happens if a student has to be quarantined or must be remote for a short period of time? So we are working on um, finalizing the plan for students who are quarantined, and I assure you that we will support those students, those who have a documented case where they have to quarantine from the Department of Health or from a doctor. So we will communicate that in the very near future. For students who are sick, uh, we won't have a remote option for them. When students are sick, we want them to stay home, recover, and come back when they're ready, but there's not a remote option for students who aren't quarantined. Has the test schedule by subject been developed for this year? If so, where can I find it? So we, if, if you're unfamiliar with the testing schedule in the student handbook, um, which is on our website, I believe it's under the uh, student tab. There you can find the testing schedule um, where we have the schedule to try to ensure that students don't have multiple exams on a given day. And that is something that um, once that student handbook, we are finalizing a couple of things for the upcoming school year, but you can see the 2020-2021 uh, version there and the test schedule is there for everyone to see. If your child did not get any of the electives he chose, is there an opportunity to um, speak with their counselor and revise their schedule? Ms. Joseph, would you like to take that question? Yes, Mr. Hosher, yeah. There is an add drop window where you can add courses if you feel that there's room in your schedule, it fits your schedule, and there's an elective you'd wanna take. There's also that same drop window where you feel a course was not a good fit for you or you'd like to drop that course. So, but in this case, always reach out to your counselor and they'll also give you the guidance on what to do next. For those staff, administrators, and custodians who have not been vaccinated, what precautions are being taken to limit contact with students and other staff? So as of last uh, year, we know that um, we're fortunate that as of last year, we had over 85% of faculty and staff vaccinated. I can only think that that number has increased. We also believe that a, a large percentage of students are vaccinated. But we do need to recognize that we're going to have some people on campus who aren't vaccinated. And that's why the health and safety precautions that we're taking are so important. So if someone is sick, we want them to stay home. Everyone needs to wear a mask. The importance of physically distancing themselves from others. If you have lunch, to make sure that you are more than six feet apart, to use the outdoor space as much as possible, the COVID testing that we're going to do. So we have a layered approach that we're going to continue to use. And that's gonna help people who are vaccinated and who are unvaccinated, because we do know that there are some breakthrough cases that we need to worry about. Last year it was dangerous for band to practice inside due to COVID. Do you know what the plan will be for this year? Will students meet every day for band? So uh, we, if you came to campus at different points last year, you would likely see band or hear band practicing outside. It was, it was great. Um, so band, that's a very, typically a very large class, just like choruses. So we are looking at the potential of, of having to divide some of those courses. Now with the plan that we're looking at, it wouldn't diminish the number of times that a student has band, um, but it may change their schedule a little bit. And so we are um, looking to finalize that plan and communicate it with you prior to the um, start of school on September 9th. My daughter is in 10th grade. Could she take the PSAT this year and again in 11th grade for merit scholarship? Ms. Johnson, would you like to take, you're, you're our testing coordinator of sorts, so. Sure, I'm happy to do that. So no, unfortunately we do not allow 10th graders to take the PSAT. We find that really 11th grade, as you've pointed out in your question, that is the only year they'll consider students for the National Merit Scholarship Competition. And as you probably know, Edgemont does very well. We always have finalists, semifinalists, um, and there are many opportunities to practice the PSAT without taking it formally. But I do encourage you to reach out to your daughter's counselor just to discuss strategy for testing um, as well as college planning. The next 
question is, will class size be smaller to accommodate three feet distance between students? Our uh, class sizes, um, we are, we have the same class sizes as in a typical year, but what is different is that to maximize space in classrooms, we've moved out a lot of furniture. We did that prior to the start of the pandemic and that furniture has not been returned to classrooms. So desks can be further apart. We're also mindful when we schedule classes to think about if we have a very large class and there's another classroom that is open to use that larger classroom rather than the smaller classrooms. And again, uh, what's different is the use of outdoor spaces in a greater way than we would in a, a non-COVID year. The next question is, if a student tests positive for COVID but has no symptoms, will they be allowed to attend classes online? If a student tests positive for COVID, then we will treat that as a, a positive case and the student would have to quarantine. For students who have a documented case of quarantine from the Department of Health or from a doctor, we will provide support to that student. We are still finalizing what that support will look like, but I do think we'll be able to share our plan uh, very soon. If my child is absent for a day or two, how will she get back on track? Will she have to complete the homework and assignments she missed? Will they be in the front office for me to pick up during the day? Google Classroom has been a great resource through the pandemic, and our teachers regularly use Google Classroom for all of the materials. So I don't know that I can say yes or no that the homework won't be or will be required. I think that's a conversation. That's where the communication between student and teacher is so important. But if a student is not feeling well, the most important thing is for them to take the time that they need to rest, recover, and then come back when they're ready. Sorry, you're muted again. There are a couple questions about what happens when a student is, is quarantined due to a COVID exposure. How will they, will there be remote learning for them? What will they do to keep up with their classes? So we're not prepared yet to say what exactly the plan will be. Uh, we are close to finalizing that, but I assure you that we will provide support to students who have to quarantine, who have a documented case, and again, uh, we will communicate that prior to the start of school. Can I just add a little bit to that um, answer? I, I just want to comment that there has been no change. It's still the same amount of quarantine. So it's still the 10 day quarantine for someone who is considered a close contact. That was our last question, Mr. Hosier. Parents, if I didn't read your question, it's because somebody else asked it and we answered. If you weren't satisfied, I do have the document open. Please type another question. I'll be happy to share it. Um, otherwise, that is the end of our questions. I think let's wait another minute. Uh, there's always one or two more questions that come in. So we wanna make sure we can answer those because we do have a little more time if need be. My hope is that as you leave our meeting tonight, you have a sense that we have a plan in place. It's a plan that worked really well last year and that we're gonna utilize what we learned to keep students and faculty and staff on campus safe and that we're gonna do everything we can to keep schools open, to make sure that students have a terrific year and that when the school year ends in June, we can look back and appreciate the year that we did have. I am optimistic. I think, uh, you know, when we had our graduation last year, there was, we ended on such a high. It feels like we're taking a step back by needing masks again and having to worry about Delta and uh, the COVID rates. But we do think that we have the precautions, the strategies in place and that we are setting our, ourselves up to have a terrific year. And we can't wait to see students come back on September 9th. There's um, having everyone back is gonna have a lot of energy that we've missed. And I'm, I know students are really excited to see each other as well. So we have gotten a couple more questions in. The first is my daughter lost her ID over the summer. I've gone to the ID card section of the web, website, but it's still showing 
2020-2021 school year. So how can I order a new ID card for her? We will update that link to change it to our current school year, but you can use that same link and our technology department will process that ID and try to have it ready for the start of school. And finally, what if a teacher has COVID-19? So if a teacher has COVID-19, uh, likewise, that teacher would have to quarantine. And so the teacher would not be in school. We would have to have a plan in place to support students who are um, on campus. And part of what that would look like in terms of instruction is, is the teacher asymptomatic or are they ill with COVID? And so we have to look at each case to determine what the support will be for both for the teacher and then for the students who are in the classroom. And that is our final question. Okay. I want to thank everyone for uh, joining us tonight. We do have one more meeting at uh, 8 p.m. for parents of seniors. Some of the information will be the same. Some of it will be tailored to, of course, our seniors. Please reach out to us if you have any concerns, any questions. We want to make sure that students are comfortable when they return on September 9th. So anything we can do to help support in that area, please let us know. But we're really excited for the upcoming school year. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night.